Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is a Triton T90SR pumped electric shower. I'm gonna have a look inside it today and just see what's going on in there. Before I do that, I'll show you over here is a pull cord going up to the ceiling with an isolator. Should be a double pole job and uh, it's off at the moment. The green flag is down. It has a couple of cobwebs on it. This has two screws, one here, one here. And likewise on the base, one here and one over there. And it should come off in one hand. It might have a neon attached to it. Does it? Yes, it does. Hmm, let me get that off. Right. So let's take a look at this. I don't know much about these. And this is a relatively modern one. So let's see what we've got going on. I think I fitted this, you know, years ago. What year would it be? Let's have a look can't see this. There's a plate in there. T90SR IP25. Let's see. 9 kilowatts. T90SR made in Coventry, Warwickshire. IRL model it says. B-E-A-B IRL. Now oh, I can't see. Any more than that, I don't know if you can either. If I put that in there, upside down. Okay. What I would like to see is a date code on something, but I don't see anything there. So, what's going on with this unit? Water's coming in here, power's coming in here. So this is the power coming in, brown live, neutral. Looks to be six mil on this one. Big lump of wood shoved in there. That looks like my handiwork. And lots of silicone underneath the bottom there to provide some level of water protection coming down there to stop it going into the wall because the PEX pipe comes up and it comes out in two elbows to here to the inlet. Electric comes in over to the top, goes straight live to this thermal cutout. And that's a factory fitted crimp there, that yellow. A bit strange and then it comes out the other side of that on a smaller cable split in two here to this which is the on off switch there's a button clicking on off up there that's on that's off that's your selector for one or two elements and that's your flow regulator down here so the water's coming in here it's got the thing says inlet there. I don't know what that is. I don't want to pull it off now. It says do not over inlet, do not over tighten. That's the pump. So it looks to be running on DC. So I presume that's some kind of a transformer with power coming in neutral straight off the mains, live coming off the. It's coming off the live side of the thermal switch. It's a bit of a way of doing it. It's a shorter cable to there. Nevertheless, um, I think that's just a transformer in a box and a rectifier because it's saying plus and minus there and it's got a commission link on off I don't know what that's for but uh, you have to swap that over I don't know oh maybe it's to run it without the pump on until you've cleared it through so because it's set to off there the red is bridging the two pins on top and it will be on on the bottom for commissioning it's kind of counterintuitive that that other noise is another pump, pressure pump for the water in the taps. Water comes into the pump, gets pumped some, or well, comes in here, pumped around. There's a little motor swizzing around in there. That's the newer, that's a completely sealed unit by the looks of things. The older ones I've seen have brushed commutator motors on them, little universal motors. So it goes to here, flow regulator decides how much water to let in, which in turn um, decides well, it decides the flow, but it also decides the temperature because the thing has a temperature gauge on the front. But if you let more water in, it gives you colder water. If you let less water in, if you let less water in, it spends more time getting heated up, so it comes out hotter. That's why sometimes on these, especially in winter, whenever you turn them on, even if you have them up to the max, it still comes out quite cold and or quite a trickle. It'll come out hot, but it's quite a trickle. Uh, down here, that's your inlet valve, so it's a 
solenoid valve to let the water in. So when you turn it on, that clunks on, lets the water in here, and then out through the flow regulator into this. This is the boiler. Sealed unit again, crimped on copper top. Similar to other ones, but different, I guess, because it has a different inlet here. Water comes in at the bottom. A lot of these, the water comes in at the top, or no, it comes out, out through a pipe here that goes up here. So it's probably similar to other models. It's normally a stainless steel or a copper pipe going up through the center. So the water coming out is coming from the top of the boiler. And there'll be two coils, one after the other, one on top of the other of uh, basically like a kettle, but they're copper copper elements. So not much to it. The selector, I think, runs these micro switches. I'm not sure what this one's contacting here. I think this one here is just doing the flow on this. Does that make sense? I don't know. I don't have a wiring diagram. Must be something stopping it having the elements on because this button here that's, that's not doing the whole of the thing ah uh, i know okay so within here there's a little plastic pin going up and that goes to a pressure switch in here so these elements don't come on unless there's enough pressure from the water so it automatically if there isn't enough pressure switches them off so when you turn this on the little cable is going up to here that's blue coming to neutral and two lives. One is going, ah, it's a piggyback, right, okay. So when you press this on, it turns on this, which also then feeds another line from here up to the motor. So the motor and the flow and the solenoid come on at the same time. Once there's enough pressure inside from the pump, because you need the pump to give the pressure, then it turns on a little diaphragm in here that pushes up a switch which also then in turn turns on these two elements, one or two, or none, depending on what you've turned on, because you can select none and have a running cold. Right, I think I'm there. I think I've decided how it works. Decided. I think I've investigated how it works. That's a pressure relief, so if there's water coming out of that, it's um, had too much pressure in it, probably from a blockage in the hose or the shower head. Nothing left for me but to put the cover back on. I fitted this and it was quite easy to fit. I had to remember I had to move the shower thing over because of the because it was previously it was a vertical one it was an old red ring that was here before and I made a video of that after I took it out it was a torture because this um, overheating thermal switch used to cut out or cut in all the time cut out so you had to take it off but it didn't have screws on it it had a little hex head and you had to get a needle nose pliers take it off reset it it was torture because whatever way it worked, it wouldn't, um, I think it was this switch here was also on the knob. So when you turned it on, you had to, if you didn't clunk it off properly, it wouldn't have touched the micro switch at the end. So it would keep, the, the motor would stop. So the pressure would fall, but the boiler would keep boiling. Anyways, that's in an old red ring video. If I can post a link to it here, I will. Other than that, if you know anything about these, um, let me know. And the reason that you, I've made this video and the reason that you've just watched it is because you want to just see what's inside here before you open it up to fix it if you're kind of nervous about these things and if I put that back together I'm going to use two hands but I have to snap this in and then put the screws back on it's pretty simple right questions or comments leave them below thanks for watching see you later